Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the very special Target Repro webinar event presented by Verbac. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name's Alex, and I'm the product manager for the sheep range at Verbac, and I'll be your moderator uh, for this evening's events. Uh, tonight, we have the pleasure of having Dr. Graham Lane, Dr. George Cox, and Dr. Paul Rivers Gonzalez on board to present a brand new program and the exciting benefits it can provide. Uh, before we do get into it, a bit of housekeeping to start with. Uh, you should uh, be able to hear us, but we can not hear you. Uh, if you're having technical issues, please call or text the number on your screen if I can get to it. There we go. Um, and we'll try our best to help you out. If you do have any questions for Graham, George or Paola, uh, please type them into the question box provided and we'll address them at the end of the session. Uh, please be as clear as possible when asking questions so that we can give you the best possible answers as well. Uh, tonight we are giving away a pack of Multimian uh, for sheep. At the end of the webinar, there will be a survey that, survey that will pop up on your screen. Simply answer the questions in this survey to go into the draw to win. You'll be notified within 24 hours if you have been successful. All right, so getting back into it. Uh, as I said tonight, we had the pleasure of having, having Dr. Graham Lane, Dr. Paola Rivers Gonzalez, and Dr. George Cox with us. Uh, Graham Lane has 36 years experience uh, consulting to farmers and agribusiness in New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia, and has presented at conferences internationally as well as across Australia. He also spent five years in a lecturer position at the University of Melbourne in the Veterinary Faculties McKinnon Project, and has authored a number of scientific papers. He has veterinary and finance qualifications and is an authorised representative to provide futures advice in agricultural commodities. Our second presenter tonight, uh, Dr. George Cox, is an experienced livestock veterinarian, having spent time in mixed rural practice, in clinical product development and evaluation, training, marketing management and technical services. George is a member of the Sheep, Camel and Goat Vet and Australian Cattle Vet interest groups of the AVA and has a keen interest in livestock health and production. Our third presenter for tonight is Dr. Paola Gonzalez-Rivers, uh, and she is the Technical Services Manager for Nutrition at Verbeck. Uh, Paola is a veterinarian with a Master's in Animal Studies from the University of Queensland, a PhD in Agricultural Sciences from the University of Melbourne, and five years of experience in small and large animal practice in Chile. Paola has six years of experience in research applied to nutrition uh, and heat stress in ruminants. Uh, before I do pass over to George and Paola to get us started tonight, we will be asking a few poll questions throughout the evening. Uh, these uh, questions will help us get a better understanding of who you are and what information will be most beneficial to you. Uh, these poll questions are anonymous, so please be honest with your responses. And we will have a crack at a few poll questions now. So you should see the first one popping up on your screen now. It's a nice, simple one to get us started. Do you currently scan for multiples? Yes or no? Responses are coming through. Give it another five seconds. And we'll close that one down now. I'll share the responses with everyone as we go through tonight. So, uh, so yes, answers are 68% of the responses and 32% have said no. Next question. Are you currently using Overstim? Yes or no? Close that one in three, two, one. Okay, and for this one, we have 88% saying no, they do not currently use Oversteam, and 12% saying yes, they do. Okay, and we've got some more poll questions coming uh, throughout the evening as well. All right, so thanks for that, guys. Um, yeah, please, please keep an eye out. We'll have more poll questions as we go on. Um, for now, I will pass over to George and Paola to get us started this evening. Thank you, George. 
Thanks, Alex. And it's a, it's a really uh, an exciting time to be uh, a, a sheep producer. And uh, if we look at the newsletter from McKinnon that just came out, uh, the financial farm performance is, is one of the best in 50 years of, of, of analysis. And if we look at the uh, livestock industry or the, the sheep industry in New South Wales specifically, uh, we can definitely see the, the, the positive trend of uh, the profitability uh, of, of sheep farming. The only problem with that is though that uh, the, the current sheep flock is at its lowest level uh, ever. And uh, so, so we're in the, in the, in the process of, of rebuilding that uh, sheep flock and there's a couple of ways that we can produce more uh, more, more lambs and, and, and one is to, to to improve the pregnancy rate of the animals or the fertility of the animals but that's a really long process uh, and, and it takes a long time we could buy in more use uh, but then we have to keep in mind that there, there will be biosecurity issues and we might be uh, buying in animals that are genetically inferior to to, to what we currently have and on top of that, we've had rain in most of the sheep producing areas, uh, so they, they're really difficult to get hold of. So we're really only left uh, with increasing the number of lambs that we produce per ewe, and then making sure that those uh, increased lambs survive until uh, we, we sell them uh, eventually. So it's, it's, it's really a, a good opportunity for us to, to introduce the target sheep repro program and it's it's really two products that most of us should actually be aware of uh, and we, we know that not a lot of people use Overstim and therefore it's a, it's a really good opportunity for, for for me to tell you a little bit more about Overstim uh, but that, that's a product that we use to, 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 to produce more lambs so basically there's more more over available and it uh, leads into the production of more lambs and then multiman uh, you sh we, we should be aware of that it, it actually improves the embryo survival so more of those lambs survive uh, until the, until sale and they are heavier at sale so it's a, a two, two pronged approach to to, to to solve the problem and it's all in a, a very easily uh, applicable program uh, involving both the rams and the ewes uh, and we just have to use the right product at the right time uh, to, to get the results that see at the bottom. Uh, so on average, we've seen with Overstim in, in published literature that you get about a 23% increase in lambing rate. Uh, and then with Multiman, there's published information that shows that more of those lambs survive and they are heavier at weaning. So really, really good opportunity. And if you look at a, a, a thousand ewe flock and we uh, assume lamb prices of $175 per head, which is fairly uh, conservative. And you have an operation where you are currently at a lambing rate of 110%, and you can improve that by 20%. Uh, it relates to an additional $40,000 of income that you can make. So really, really uh, a profitable option. How does Overstim work? Overstim is a vaccine, and we, we all, well, we actually differ in opinion whether we uh, reproduction is controlled by the brain or by hormones, uh, but it is actually both. The, the brain releases a uh, ovary stimulating hormone, which tells the ovary to form a follicle. That follicle then produces another hormone, androstein dione, which tells the brain to stop producing that ovary stimulating hormone. Uh, and that leads to the normal uh, result that we, we always get. If we use ovistim though, that uh, it's a, it's a vaccine that stimulates an immune response that blocks the effect of androstein uh, which means that negative feedback back to the brain to stop the stimulating hormones doesn't happen. And we get more follicles that develop into ova uh, and we get multiple uh, lambs being born. So in short, Overstim gives you more eggs, more multiples, and you mark more lambs. It is a vaccine, so when we use it for the first time, we have to do use uh, two vaccinations. So the initial vaccination is six to nine weeks uh, before joining, and your second vaccination, preferably four weeks before joining, uh, but three to four weeks before joining. And the, the closer we can get to the four weeks uh, prior to joining uh, is, is, is to avoid the very high levels of antibodies that will suppress uh, estrus in some use. You might get some of the use that are not cycling, uh, for the first couple of weeks, uh, but when you introduce the lambs for uh, the, the rams four weeks later, 
uh, they should all be cycling. If you're joining out of season, it's always a good idea to introduce teasers two weeks before joining as well. Uh, but remember, if you synchronize the the use with by using a teaser, uh, you have to increase your RAM ratio as well. After roughly about 14 weeks, uh, the antibody levels drops to a, a level that has no effect on the ovulation cycle any longer. If you use a sorry, let's just go back. If you use it the next year, you only have to give the second vaccination four weeks prior to joining. We now have another poll question from Alex. Sorry, George, I was taking myself off mute. Um, thank you, George. Okay, so next poll question will be coming up on your screen now. Do you normally supplement with trace minerals? Yes, just the use. Yes, just the rams. C, both. Or D, I do not supplement. Shut that down in three, two, one. And a good mix here. Um, so we've got 22% saying yes, they do supplement their use. 0% say yes, just the RAMs. 36% uh, supplement both and 41% do not supplement. Next question. How do you currently supplement with trace minerals? You supplement with injectables. Uh, with an orals, with an oral, sorry, uh, such as a loose mix, water solution, or a drench. Uh, C, both. So both an oral and an injectable. Or D, no, you do not. Shut that down in three, two, one. A good mix here as well. So 42% uh, uh, supplement with an oral uh, version of a trace mineral, 20% uh, uh, do a combination, so do both, and 32% um, do not supplement, but 6% uh, do uh, inject with a injectable trace mineral. And final poll question before we hand over to Paola. Are you currently using Multimin for sheep? Yes, Multimin copper free. Yes, multimin with copper, we'll see no. Shut that one down in three, two, one. So 70, if I'll share it there. If so, 78% of you are not currently using multimin for sheep. 11% uh, of you are using multimin for copper and 10% uh, are using the copper free version. Thank you all for your responses. Paola, over to you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks everyone for answering those questions. Fertility and health are highly determined by nutrition. Trace minerals have been used in human medicine to improve male and female fertility and health for many years. If we understand the importance of nutrition to support pregnancy in, human, in humans, why not applying the same principles to livestock? Next one, please. Multimin is a trace mineral injection containing copper, selenium, zinc, and manganese, especially formula, formula, formulated for sheep. We also have a unique copper-free formulation for sheep and cattle. Multimin significantly improves conception rates by increasing trace minerals and antioxidants that are essential for male and female fertility and embryo survival. The antioxidants neutralize the effects of free radicals. Free radicals are natural byproducts of the growth and metabolism, which can damage the healthy cells if they accumulate. Multimins provide four key trace minerals required to ma make two essential antioxidants to keep the free radicals in balance. Next one, please. Increased antioxidants have the benefit to protecting cells and boost male and female fertility. We know that there are two parts of the equation when considering fertility. 
on the male side, we need to make sure that the sperm production and quality is very healthy. Sperm are susceptible to, free, to the free radical damage. If we can provide them with trace minerals and antioxidants, they will be better protected from the free radicals. This means better male fertility. On the female side, the antioxidants protect the fertilized embryo. The embryo is a very quickly growing cluster of cells. It's also very sensitive to the free radicals, which can ultimately result in early pregnancy losses. Because multimin can boost the antioxidant system, it can help defending the embryo against the free radicals and improving embryo survival. Multimin is working here, not by increasing the number of conceptions, but instead it's helping to protect the embryo and retain the pregnancy. Multimin is a trace mineral injection designed to be part to be, of a complete nutrition program. It's not, intended, it's not intended to use instead of good nutrition and can be used at the same time as oral trace minerals because the oral trace minerals help to meet the daily requirement and then maintain the levels of trace minerals to avoid deficiencies. Multimin injections are used specifically during high demand period to get the animal's performance ready. Next one. So let's now review the Target Reaper program. The Target Reaper program starts 12 weeks before joining with the RAM assessment. At this point, we evaluate and replace the RAMs if necessary. We need to be sure that the RAMs are in optimal physical conditions by checking the five T's, the toes, the teeth, the torso, the testes, and the tussle. Next one. The RAM management must follow the eight weeks rule. We need to provide increased plan of nutrition to the RAMs by feeding high protein and low starch grains to ensure a body condition score of three or four. It's important to avoid intense handling and management eight weeks closer to joining. Any stress, injuries, or sickness too close to joining, to joining affects sperm production and may ruin the entire joining season because the sperm production can take up to nine weeks to recover. Important also at this point is to drench and vaccinate the runs. Supplement vitamin A if the rams have been on dry feed for a long time and supplements trace minerals such as copper, selenium, zinc, and manganese that are important for sperm production and performance. Next one. We recommend injecting multimin to the rams 12 weeks pre-joining and also adjoining. Spermatogenesis takes between seven to nine weeks and although the trace minerals are immediately, immediately available after the multimine injection, it takes about two to three weeks for the antioxidant levels to increase. We need to provide the trace minerals and antioxidants to the rams to cover the six weeks of joining. This period is usually associated with reduced feed intake and high metabolic and physical activity, and therefore the rams are unlikely to meet their requirements with oral trace minerals alone. Next one. Injecting multimin to runs 12 weeks pre-joining and also adjoining helps to improve the quality and quantity of the sperm, improve immunity and hoof health, improve the serving capacity and libido performance and the recovery for the next joining. But it's not all about, about the rams though. Uh, we, we have to really take uh, good care of the use as well. And, the grain will expand a little bit on the lifetime you management a little bit later. But uh, if, if rams take about two months to for spermatogenesis, remember the follicle takes six months uh, from uh, to, to, to develop to a fully mature follicle. So it's a really long time. Uh, and that's why your pre-lambing condition score in use is so important. Because uh, during lactation, the follicles are already developing for the next joining season. So pre-lambing and pre-joining condition scores are really, really important. If they're not in the right condition, uh, looking at them six to nine weeks pre-joining is a good time to then consider whether you need flushing, because if you get the animals in a positive growing phase, uh, then your results, uh, your reproductive results can be up to 15% better. And this is then also the time that you give the first dose of ovistum. 
three to four weeks or four weeks pre-joining, as we said, that's the time you give the second dose of ovastim. And this is when you consider whether you're going to use uh, teasers to synchronize the animals or get them cycling if it's out of season. Uh, and that is when you'll decide when you're going to start your, your flushing, if, if required as well. Uh, normally that's done with uh, something like lupins, and we're looking at about 500 grams per, head per day, uh, and you start feeding that about two weeks prior to the joining season, and then two to four weeks into the, the, the joining itself. Uh, but this is also the time then when it's really important to give the first multi-man injection for the ewes as well. And that is uh, to allow enough time for the enzymes to be there when the embryo enters into the uterus so that the embryo can be properly protected, as, as, as Paola explained. Uh, this will lead to more of those embryos uh, surviving, a tighter lambing, because he, a lot of those early embryos will survive, uh, which leads to improved production and eventually less empties and more, more multiples in, in, in the use as well. If we go then on to joining, uh, it's, it's really important that we give every you uh, the best possible opportunity to conceive. Uh, therefore, we have to use enough rams. And uh, normally, uh, normally if, if the rams are sound, 1% uh, should be sufficient. But if you're synchronizing those animals, uh, you, you can need up to 3%, uh, a ram ratio of up to 3%. Uh, it's really important that you maintain the nutrition during joining and again uh, afford them some privacy, uh, avoid stress and handling during that time, uh, which will improve the uh, embryo survival as well. Uh, then uh, don't open up all the uh, gates. Uh, the, the ewes need to be able to find the rams uh, in, at, at the right time so that you, you get optimal conception. Uh, so don't uh, have them in too big a paddocks. Uh, remember the multiman when the rams goes in, because that's roughly about three months after the first injection. So you need the top up before the, 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 the really high uh, stressful period. And then lastly, it's really important to uh, let your scanner know uh, when you're joining uh, so that he can uh, confirm his availability for, for, for scanning. Uh, this, the window for scanning is fairly small if you want to scan accurately for, for, for multiples. Now, the scanning is really important uh, because we have to manage those multiple bearing use uh, separately. Uh, we, we know that the energy requirements of, of multiple bearing use are much higher than, than single bearing use, and therefore we'll give them the best possible uh, paddocks, uh, and that'll lead to an increased survival rate in the twins and even in the use as well. Uh, if you look at your lambing paddocks, again, you have to make sure that there's an e enough feed available. So we're looking at one and a half tons per hectare. Uh, uh, foo, uh, but then also really important to look at the mop size. Uh, the smaller the mop size, uh, the better your, your uh, lamb survival will be. And then uh, if you're getting the animals in for scanning, it's a good opportunity to do a worm air count as well. Uh, and do the uh, applicable parasite management if, if required. The program continues with the injection of multimin to the pregnant use four weeks pre lambing Topping up the trace minerals at this point is very important for the ewe and the lamb, because during the last third of the pregnancy, the trace minerals are transferred from the ewe to the fetus via placenta, and the lambing process itself is a very high demand period for the ewe and the lamb. The trace minerals help to improve prelambing vaccine responses, enhancing also the colostrum quality. Multimin helps the lamb to be born with good reserves of trace minerals that last until weaning. Trace mineral content in the milk is low, and the lambs require the trace minerals for early growth and immunity. Importantly, selenium and zinc are essential for thyroid function. And also in iodine deficient areas, this is also the time to supplement the use with iodine. Next one. Using multimin four weeks pre lambing has a two in one effect. For the U, it supports the trace minerals status, enhancing the overall health and recovery after lambing, and it supports the immune responses to vaccines, improving colostrum quality. And in the lambs, multimin supports immunity, body heat production, and early growth until weaning. Next one. We must be prepared to receive more lambs with the Target Repro program. For that reason, lambing paddock management 
as George mentioned earlier, it's very important, providing shelter and managing the use in small mob sizes, ensuring you nutrition with optimum energy, mineral and fiber intake reduces the risk of metabolic diseases and ewe mortality. Once the lambs are born, producers must ensure colostrum intake and prevent mismothering and predation. Next one. Also, we must start planning for winning. We must aim for a 12 to 14 weeks of winning. This supports the future ewe fertility by giving the ewes enough time to recover after, after lambing. Good nutrition and health management of the lambs led the future performance and fertility. Therefore, we recommend using multivine associated to vaccines to the lambs at weaning to boost immune responses to vaccination and provide the trace minerals for the development of the reproductive system. Strategic range programs optimize the performance and help to develop immunity against parasites. Next one. In summary, the target sheep repro combines ovastim and multimin in a program that can deliver and parallel results to help improve EU productivity through a dual mode of, mode of action. First, ovastim increasing the, increases the number of eggs released per cycle producing more eggs available for, for fertilization. And multimin improves embryo survival and leads to more and healthier lambs at, at weaning. Next one. By improving the embryo survival, multimin can improve conception rates. A large scale study in Australia found that multimin used four weeks pre-joining improved conception rates by 9%, as well as increasing the number of twins born. Next one. In another study in Victoria, we found that multimin use four weeks pre-joining and also four weeks pre-lambing improved the marking rates by 9% and the winning weights by 2.3 kilo. This is a direct consequence of improved lamb immunity and lamb survival. Next one. Again, we've already mentioned that with, with Overstem you get a an average in the in the published literature, an average increase of 23% lambing rates, uh, and that is all due basically to the increase in, in the number of, of twins and the reduction in the number of singles. So in summary, uh, with Overstem we get more lambs, uh, and multiman by giving multiman at strategic times, uh, we we get an increase in lambs marked and heavier lambs at weaning and by the time we sell it. And we've been doing a, a couple of uh, target repro evaluations uh, during the last uh, breeding season. And uh, we, 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 we're currently running eight different sites uh, in, in, in the eastern, eastern side of the country. And uh, we've, we've got results back for uh, roughly 12 of them. And if, if we look at the results, uh, on average, we do see that there's a, a 20 additional lambs uh, scanned per, per, per 100 ewes joined, uh, which is really what we, we would have ex expected with, uh, with Overstem. Now, the only property we have marking results as well as the first property uh, in, in Grenfell in New South Wales, where we scanned 34% more lambs. Uh, and that was in a group of uh, cross, cross ewes. Uh, and, and they were maidens, really good condition. Uh, we used 467 maidens and we saw, saw an increase of 20% in the marking rate. So that's uh, on top of the scanning rate of, of uh, an increase of 34%. And if unfortunately uh, we, we couldn't convince this producer to use Multiman in the program as well. Uh, and uh, we, we assume that by using Multiman, uh, the, the survival from scanning to, to, to marking would have, would have increased significantly. But even uh, just looking at the 20% increase, uh, if he had used Overstem on all 2,500 of his ewes, the potential additional income, uh, if he used o just Overstem on them, would have been uh, $80,000, uh, which is really significant. It uh, could have uh, paid for your, your, your school fees this year. And uh, now Graham will, will, will tell us a little bit more about the target repro economics.
All right, Graham, we can't hear you. Got me now? Gotcha. Perfect. Good. Thanks, Paula and uh, George. That was very interesting. Thank you. And thanks for joining us, everyone, on this uh, this evening. I guess I've got to confess, in terms of um, looking at the economics of uh, overstimulus, when I was asked to look at, look at it recently, I had a sinking feeling that I've been rather stupid for quite some time. When one considers the increase in real prices in sheep, uh, lamb prices and sheep meat and wool, the the uh, potential for overstim to increase reproductive rates, conception rates and lambing rates is quite substantial. So I had a terrible feeling that I was uh, more less intelligent than two planks of wood and in fact that proved to be the case because I'm going to outline to you that the all, all of you tonight that the returns from overstim plus the returns from multi-min is quite staggering. So let's, um, without further ado, I'll introduce what I'm going to talk about tonight. And uh, firstly, lifetime new management is, I think, critical to um, a normal well-run operation. And further, uh, it's proper in its own right and practical, but combined with overstim usage, it will improve the survival and the outcomes from um, uh, using overstim. So it, it is a real um, valuable tool to improve returns. In terms of determining the economics of overstim treatment, I'll give a bit of background in terms of overstim and the model I use to determine the profitability of it, of using overstim, the assumptions I made in terms of pricing, etc., and um, the results and the conclusions that came out from this um, um, analysis. But the key take home message is that using overstim results in improvement of profit by $7 a DSC. And that, that's really substantial considering the long-term gross margin is, is around $30 per DSC. It's high at the moment, but uh, nevertheless, uh, $7 on top of any gross margin is attractive or $18 per U. That's by just increasing lambing by 23% by the use of overstim. But we've, Lifetime new helping to get more of those lambs to survive and multi-min adding weight to those lambs and getting more to survive. We're looking at a $29 per DSC profit. That's nearly as big as a long-term gross margin. It's massive. And that is for the taking. Don't be stupid like me, get into it. In terms of the uh, lifetime new, I'll Go into that in a little bit more detail. Oh, quiz, poll questions first, sorry. <laughs> Surprise you, Graham. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> okay, our final poll question for this evening, everyone. Have you completed a, a lifetime U course? Yes or no? And we'll shut that down in three, two, one. So we've got 29% of you have completed a lifetime U course, congratulations, and 71% uh, uh, have not completed one yet. Back to you, Graham. Well, I'd, I'd encourage you, if you haven't done a course, do, do one because it's really worthwhile. Um, but it's great to see those that have. Lifetime U is about measure to manage U. So you assess U condition score and manage it to hit condition score targets so there's better reproductive outcomes uh, and also better survival and growth rates of the lambs and also uh, better lifetime wool productivity of those lambs. So it's really huge in terms of its impact. <coughs> Pardon me. By assessing the pasture feed on offer, uh, use can hit their condition score target and better outcomes as will result. So there's improvements in lamb survival and growth rates, 10 to 15 percent better lambing percentage and better lifetime new production. It should result in a much better response to overstim. So the condition score targets for Merino use join on the 1st of March for lambing in August as uh, 
to join up around the three point condition score 3.5 and by mid pregnancy to let them come back to 2.7. There's that trade-off between per head production and um, per hectare production because of stocking rates. So this model was uh, determined by optimising profit per hectare and optimising stocking rate along with condition, the condition score. So 2.7 in mid-pregnancy, then uh, the twins need to rise back again and to 3.0 condition score at point of lambing and, <coughs> and the singles at 3, uh, sorry, 2.7 for time of lambing. Just to put us in, put a perspective on this, uh, this, these recommendations, I think a lot of people now manage use for better condition score, but when the trial started 20 years ago on uh, the, the two large properties uh, in Southwest Victoria and Southwest WA to um, investigate lifetime U principles, the researchers randomly condition scored uh, far, commercial farms. And in day 90 mid pregnancy, the average condition score on those farms of use was 2.3. Now that, that's, that's not terrible. That is just, that's how we used to, that's how low we were used to recommend you condition score to be. So traditional management was recommended to have used slamming at 2.5 uh, condition score, uh, 2.5 through, um, through or, or slightly less through mid pregnancy and perhaps 2.5 to 3 for joining. Recently, the targets have been updated for maternal use based on the lifetime maternal research, and they're a bit higher than those merino targets, being 3.3 for mid pregnancy, 3.0 for singles at lambing, point of lambing, and 3. Point, um, around 3.3 uh, or 3.4 lambing time for multiples. So one of the uh, successes of lifetime new history has been to focus on scanning and preferentially allocate feed to twins. So by doing so, by moving um, single lambs to paddocks where they get their requirements, which are less than the use, and to provide twin bearing use better feed so their condition score lifts but if you can lift the condition score from 2.7 to 3.3 of twin lambs you can achieve 20 lambs more per hundred ewes so that that's really significant financially <clears throat> further uh, during mid lactation uh, feed on offer should, needs to be optimized so um, by having the, the, sorry, by having ewes on about 2.5 tonne of dry matter foo uh, in the mid lact in the middle of lactation, you can certainly add a few more kilos to those lambs in terms of their weaning weight. So going from say 1.5 to 2.5 2 tonne of dry matter will add at least another kilo of dry weight to both single and twin lambs. Further to lifetime new, we know that twin management requires good shelter and pasture food. The Evergrace trial showed that uh, by providing good shelter, twin survival was increased by 18%, so that's 36% more marked. Improving pasture food from 1,100 to 2,000 kilos increased twin survival by 8%. So certainly further, more food will help twin survival and a lot of commercial farms were probably around that, um, close to that 1100 once upon a time, but now if you provide them more, you're going to get better twin survival. There's been a lot of interest in splitting mobs to increase twin survival, and in merinos and uh, maternal use, that, that, that will improve their survival by around 2%. At high food levels, that may not be seen, but uh, nevertheless, uh, for a lot of uh, pastures out there, twin survival can increase by 2%. So in terms of twin survival, let's look at the priority. Firstly, shelter wins hands down, doesn't it? And so shelter belts, thinking about better shelter paddocks for twin lambing use to, to lambing are all key um, ways to improve twin survival and profit. Pasture food, providing more pasture overall will improve Lambs, twin lamb survival. So again, that should be a focus if you can do that um, and you should do it. You can make it happen with the tools we've got out there and 
by allocating singles to paddocks and running them at a high stocking rate and giving them the pasture food level they, they can get by, uh, you can allow the twins to have more and then splitting mobs becomes uh, another uh, cream on the cake if you like. But in terms of um, priority, clearly so shelter uh, is number one, then improving pasture food levels and then three, um, splitting mobs. And here we have an illustration of the difference in survival, lamb survival weight because the pasture food levels are affecting their lamb birth weight which affects their lamb survival. So at, at 1100 foo, uh, we've got around about 85% survival at, uh, two, uh, at, at 2000 foo, we're up over 90% for survival. One of the, in, in, in the past, the overstim trials were performed on research farms and following best practice at the time. And so the classic, typical joining uh, weight was probably somewhere around that mid 40 kilo mark. Yet in the, the trials illustrated a much better response to overstim was achieved when the ewes were joined in much heavier condition. Now we've got to keep in mind that the ewes are a bit smaller back then this is about 40 years, 30, 40 years ago, and um, the <coughs> uh, average trial result that we assume, make assumptions about the response from overstim was actually 23% more marked, but 42% more is achievable at better joining weights, and that is part and parcel of lifetime new. So, to give a background on how I determine the economics of uh, using overstim, I use grass grow, which is a CSRO developed by an bioeconomic model. It's very good at simulating uh, livestock output over a wide, uh, over a, I'm sorry, across Australia, and has been validated many times um, uh, scientifically. So it, it does a very good job of that. It's uh, dense. It works on um, historical weather data. You can also simulate f further out if you want to, but um, typical simulations and um, use of it would involve, say, using 50 years weather data for a location with a certain soil type and then um, uh, looking at the typical average output and that gives you the variation of the output. Grass Grow look, does a lot and reports on a lot. Overstim was developed over 40 years ago to increase the number of lambs born. So it improves conception rates quite a bit with the typical conception rate improved by about 30 uh, percent or so and that leads to the average figure of 23 percent more lands marked. For a few years after its release it was certainly uh, it was promoted and, and, and it had um, a, and on wool and meat prices back then and meat prices were a lot lower then it, it still developed a small profit but I think a lot of farmers found it probably not enough to justify its use. I'm afraid, as I said at the start, I feel rather stupid because with meat prices, real meat prices rising and profits rising, it is time for a rethink. So I've uh, simulated a first cross U enterprise. Uh, production is based on AgVic's uh, lifetime, sorry, livestock farm monitor project benchmarking, and it's just an average maternal prime lamb enterprise. It's uh, stocked optimally according to that program and fertilised well and as a result on uh, the site that we simulated it was a stocking rate of eight ewes plus follow-on lambs and uh, ewe lambs and ram flock. Lambing in mid-July were first July stocking rate of 15 DC per hectare. The uh, enterprise turns off trade lambs and they're all sold by early January so they're just sold no matter what. But 23% more lambs achieved by using overstim was assumed, and because that actually increases conception rates, increases mid-pregnancy and point of lambing demand for those ewes, to have the same stocking rate in the winter and the same pasture food levels, um, I had to adjust the overstim uh, simulation with to a, to a stocking rate of 7.8 ewes per hectare. So that's our stocking rate at eight years per hectare, not treated with overstim. So the mid, 
mid-winter stocking rate, as you can see, on first July is 15 DSC, and then in spring, as the lambs come on and uh, they're fattened, the uh, the feed demand rises up to 34 D, nearly 34 uh, DSC per hectare. On the other hand, because of an increase in lambing percentage and conception rates in the uh, overstem treated ewes, uh, again we've got a 15, we've running 7.8 of them per hectare. We've got a mid-winter stocking rate of 15, but the spring requirement climbs to 36 DC per hectare. So using uh, more spring food efficiently, which is um, means that you can have a lot more profit by uh, eating off that excess grass in spring and converting it to product. We also ran through a simulation assuming lifetime new management plus multi-min, so there was better survival of those lambs and, and they were heavier. So the same stocking rate was achieved. There was a slight increase in uh, conception rate, but it didn't really need, the mid-winter mid stocking rate was the same and the pasture food was the same, but the feed demand in spring, peak feed demand is nearly 38, well, it's over 38 DC per hectare just to give an indication that you've got more lambs on and they're bigger. In terms of prices, we assume five year price, sorry, two years average prices, which uh, um, despite COVID-19, uh, they still average 813 cents for lamb and 632 cents per kilogram dressed for mutton. Um, I guess that, um, you know, there's some speculative thought that we're still yet to see the full impact of uh, African swine fever. The Chinese say they've rebuilt their pig herd, but I think that's um, that they're actually flying those pigs because it takes a fair bit to rebuild a pig herd. So there's likely meat protein gap globally for the Chinese consumer is isn't about the size of all globally traded meat. So far, China's done a very good job of hiding their extra demand, I think, but uh, the pressure will be on constantly on that and it could explode at some stage because as we come out of COVID-19, uh, it's likely we're better. The world is coming out very strongly uh, in terms of economic growth and uh, if meat demand increases globally, then there'll be meat supplies will be really stretched globally. So what will support that is not only ASF, it's also general Asian global growth post-COVID is typically looking very positive and it will support high prices and I've budgeted on there, I think. And over the next 10 years, Asian wealth, including China, will continue to increase and meat demand will increase. So the question mark is, where is the supply to meet this? It's a part of the pun. I mean, it's just not there. So price will probably keep firm or go up. <clears throat> so. In the overstem treated farm, it produces 48 kg more per hectare, sorry, 48 kg per hectare more meat. But because you're actually running less ewes and more uh, lambs are slaughtered, there's 53 kilograms per hectare of more lamb, which is more valuable, of course. The lambs, um, because there's more twins, were slightly lighter, only 0.2 of a kilo difference. And the annual average stocking rate not the winter, mid-winter stocking rate increased from 19.9 DSC per hectare to 20.4 DSC per hectare. But by treating the farm, treating the ewes with overstim, um, it costs about three dollars per hectare per year, sorry, per head per year, um, per ewe per year. The gross margin was increased by 10% or seven dollars a DSC. So $18 per ewe extra profit or 18,000 per thousand ewes out there. That's a lot of money. But with Overstim uh, plus lifetime new and multi-min, you've got another 113 kilos of, per hectare more meat and 117 kilograms per hectare of that is more lamb uh, due to high survival. Uh, and the lamb sold were 2.3 kilos heavier on average due to multi-min. So with the Overstim lifetime new and multi-min use their average, annual stocking rate was 21.6 DSC versus the uh, untreated normal flock of 19.9 DSC per hectare. And, and remember, most of that's achieved because of high demand in the spring when you've got excess feed anyway. But the gross margin increased by 40%, $29 per DSC, virtually as 
the, the actual long-term gross margin from a sheep enterprise. So that equates to $59 per U extra profit or $59,000 extra profit for 1,000 years for an investment of about $5,000 per year per year in multi-min and overstim. I can't think of many better investments. So lower lamb and mutton prices didn't make a lot of difference to the outcome. So if you ran lamb price at 700 cents per kg, and it's currently at 850, and mutton at 600 cents per kg, and it's about 680 currently, the advantage for the overstim treated use was still $6 per DC or $14 per year. So there's a fair bit of uh, downside on the commodity prices before you'd be um, making significant, you know, unattractive returns, put it that way, you'd have to go a long way down. So just to put it in perspective, in terms of uh, the non-treated um, ewe flock, the weather lamb growth rates, as you can see, um, in the middle of um, the bold orange line is the median year out of 50, and uh, they're hunting around most of the spring around that for over 300 grams per head per day. And of course, as the pastures uh, start to uh, mature that hit that declines after they're weaned but uh, they they're still hunting around that 200 to 150 grams per head per day for a fair bit of the late spring early summer and then they turned off in early January. There's not a lot of difference to be seen with the overstim treated flock okay so um, the, the 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 median um, year, the median result is still around that 300 plus grams per head per day and they um, follow a very similar path to the um, to the to the um, uh, non-treated flock. In terms of the growth part, that the the lands from the ewes not treated with overstim make solid gains right through. And again, that uh, uh, orange solid line is the the median res result out of the years that were run, and they finish up around 55 kilos. Uh, live to be, when they're sold. Still on an upward trajectory. <clears throat> in terms of the overstim treated flock, it's virtually the same. They're still slightly, uh, and they're still around that 55 kilos per head, 0.2 of a kilo difference from the untreated flock. So, in comparison to using overstim, Halving mob size, putting up extra temporary fencing and labour inputs, you can improve your lambing percentage by 2%. Adopting lifetime mew, let's say it increases land percentage by 10%. Overstim, for a $3 per U per year outlay, you're increasing lamping percentage by 23%. I don't think I've seen many no-brainers lately like that. And further, if you use overstim, multi-min and adopt lifetime mew, for an extra $5 per year per year outlay, you're increasing land percentage by 42%. That's massive. So in conclusion, um, we've I found that overstim increase was assuming overstim results in a 23% increase in lambs born and costs, three dollars per head a year plus you add in lifetime new and multi-min, it results in 42% more lambs for $5 a year. Um, and while maintaining the same winter stocking rate, uh, overstim usage results in $7 per DSC extra profit despite less use being run, or $18 per year profit, and overstim uh, plus multi-min plus adopting lifetime new results in $29 a DC profit or $59 per U extra profit. That's staggeringly high, it really is. So in summary, certainly I've covered lifetime new management. It's very profitable and practical. I've outlined the economics behind my analysis of um, overstim treatment of ewes with uh, backgrounding overstim and uh, grass grow and run through the assumptions. The results are staggeringly good for overstim and sensational with adding in multi-min and uh, lifetime new management. So just to recap, overstim it by itself for three dollars for a cost of three dollars a year per year, it costs about it results in a profit of about seven dollars DC or eighteen dollars a year. And lifetime U and multi-min on top of overstim 
provides a $59 a year per, per year profit. And uh, don't be don't be stupid like me. Go out and do it. Awesome. No, thanks, Graham, uh, and thank you, George and, and Paula as well. Uh, guys, if you do have any questions, please type them into the, the question box provided. I've seen quite a few come through already, but uh, yeah, please get them through now uh, as we have all three presenters to, to answer those questions. Um, if you do want more information on Target Repro, uh, you can download the brochure by locating the handouts tab on your GoTo panel. Hit the arrow and double click on the attachment uh, named Target Repro brochure to download this attachment. Uh, if you don't have any issues, you can email me following this webinar and I can email this brochure to you. I've seen some questions come through with some people having a few troubles downloading it, so I will address those and I will make sure you, you get a copy of, of the brochure as well. Cool, so um, moving on to questions now, and as I said, we've already had quite a few questions come through, and I will start going through those now, but yeah, guys, please ask them, and we will try and get to all your questions. If we don't, we will make sure we get an email response to you, but I think we're all happy to, to go over time. Um, I know most of our presenters are in New South Wales and have nothing else to do anyway, so. Um, okay, so first question, so this one's for George. Um, do you see an increase in triplet rates with the use of overstim? Uh, we saw a 7 to 15% increase in conception with the use of multimin along. Uh, so we're concerned that if including overstim, we would or we could get a large number of triplets. Yeah, you must remember it, it won't be additive. Um, the the multimin will give you an, an, an increase, but if you use overstim, uh, the multimin will will protect those embryos and, and protect the lambs as well. Um, so no, we, we actually now recommend using both of them in the program and it should not uh, increase uh, the number of, of, of triplets that you see too too much. It'll be still in proportion uh, to, to twins. Right, thank you, George. Uh, next question is, is a multimin given 14 days pre-lambing too late to receive ideal response? So I'll hand that over to Paula to answer that question. It's 14 days to lambing. For is so is a multimin given 14 days pre-lambing too late to receive ideal response? Yeah, so remember that uh, we should avoid management too close to lambing. So ideally management to to be should be more than two weeks to lambing to reduce the stress in the use and, and probably have some issues with hypocalcemia or some, some other metabolic diseases. So ideally, four to three weeks pre-lambing. Great, thank you, Paola. Uh, next question is for you as well. Uh, why would you choose copper-free over copper multimin? <laughs> So that yeah, that's a very good question. We we know that there are areas where the copper-free product is it's preferred and it's highly recommended. It will depend on your on your farm, on your pasture and soil quality. There are areas that are high in copper in the soil, so the pasture tends to accumulate more copper, and this is why we we have the copper-free product. Other, other areas where we recommend the copper-free product is when we have so much heliotropes and we cannot control them and the, the use can have, or the sheep in general can have access to heliotrope and we can have some problems with chronic uh, liver damage. And this is where we also recommend a copper-free product. The other options are uh, where we have clover dominant pasture that tends to have very low molybdenum in the, past, in, the, in the pasture and they may increase the absorption of copper. So these are the, probably the three um, cases we we'll recommend copper free. Okay, thank you, Paula. Uh, the next one is for Graham. Graham, do you have any data showing the effects of overstim against body condition score instead of weight? Um, I don't believe that we have ready access to that. The condition score certainly was re measured, but um, the, the key metric a lot of the old research, research used to use was uh, body weight. Great, thank you, Graham. Uh, next question is, were the trial groups a cross range of breeds or just cross breeds? Happy for George, that one. 
Uh, the old work was done on both merinos and crossbreeds, um, and yeah, results mm -hmm. differ between 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 the, uh, the, the the animals or the trial sites. Mm. Um, next one: uh, Does Oversim have different benefits at different times of joining, e.g., November or January joining? Uh, yeah. Remember, sheep, uh, you, you do get better results if, if daylight is shortening. So if you, you're joining in uh, late late summer, uh, autumn, uh, the, the result is normally a little bit better. Uh, but you, you still get really good results with, with most breeds. If, if you're not using the British British breech, breeds that are really seasonal, uh, you, you, really, you, you still get good results joining in November as well using the product. Okay, uh, next one. Thoughts, this is a common one. Thoughts on using Oversim in Merinos. We use it on our crossbreds with good results, but I believe it is not recommended for Merinos. Why? Uh, uh, on, on, on the label it says not recommended for, for use in Merinos, but I'll let Graham answer this one. Uh, yeah, yes, um, well, Essentially, uh, that is because in the past, the twin, six, uh, twin survival wasn't so good in merinos, so you could essentially converting single, singles into t twins. But um, twin survival in merinos nowadays can be very good. And, and in essence, if you've got good twin survival on your farm, then you're going to get a benefit from using Overstim. I mean, there's nothing magical about it. It's a, a biological res response is similar in merinos to um, uh, uh, maternal use and the key point there is though if you've got you're getting good survival in twins then you'll get good survival with overstim causing more twins simple as that so you have to manage your multiple bearing use separately that's that's the key yes. yep okay uh hmm. if you already scan between 175 percent and 180 percent in a crossbred flock will overstim reduce weaning rates due to increase in triplets Well, we we we're currently busy with a study, or and, and Graham is assisting us with with that. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to give better answers pretty soon. Uh, but but I, Graham, your opinion? I, I, I might be brave, George, and add in. Um, <laughs> cer certainly, if if you're going to have more triplets, they'll be sl they will be smaller, but you'll have more of them. So. Um, potentially there is an increase in efficiency and an increase in turn off of lamb as a result per hectare. So it's likely to be um, beneficial. But the critical thing here, even more important than the twin one, is that you've got to be able to get those tri extra triplets to survive. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're already scanning at those rates, you'll be getting tri triplets. You know, basically from 170 plus, you convert twins into triplets very quickly. So you need to be able to manage those triplets, uh, tri that triplet survival, otherwise um, it, you, you may not get a benefit at all. Well, you won't get much of a benefit, put it that way. Great, thank you, Graham. Um, Can I just say, I another yeah, Bob's work. The current trial, we're looking at um, a, a, a site, where it's been run on a site where there, um, so triplet survival has been good, and so uh, we'll, we'll proving uh, ho hopefully we'll get some outcomes out of that, which will be able to be shared with everyone. <clears throat> yep, stay tuned. Um, next question is for Paula: uh, Does multimin responses vary uh, between low and high fall, high rainfall zones? So it will it will be very helpful regardless pasture condition. And season, so this is this is why we, we recommend using every year. Um, we don't need to look at the amount of pasture that we have on the ground to evaluate with whether to use or not. Remember that multimin is a top up of trace minerals, so we can increase the levels of trace minerals for performance. And what is in the pasture? It's just for maintenance. So if we if we have good pasture, we can have good levels for maintenance and we can reduce the risk of, of deficiencies and with multimin we can have an even better performance. Thank you, Paola. 
the next one, and I think George, this is for you. Um, how long have the trials been running for? Which ones? Uh, <laughs> Which ones? Yeah. <laughs> the evaluations have been running for, for a couple of months. The evaluations, yes. <laughs> the evaluations we started last year. Um, so yeah, we, we should have some 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 decent results by the end of this year. Uh, and yeah. then the dismay control, we should have a mm. final report by February next year. Yep. And just just on that on that, George. So w when you were comparing those results, that was compared to a control group, not to to previous year results. Is that correct? Yes. The setup of the evaluations, we we asked for a minimum of about 500 use uh, of mm. similar parity or age, uh, and uh, then half of them are treated with overstim and half of them uh, not, uh, so they get the target repo program now uh, on, on half of the animals, half not, so you have that positive control and it's it's, it's sufficient numbers to, to, to give you decent uh, uh, results. Yep, That's great. All right, guys, we have one more question. If you do have any more, please uh, let me know. Um, there are a couple here which we will get more information and get back to you if I haven't responded to your question, but if you do have any more, yeah, please send them through and we'll We'll get either Graham, Paula, or George to, to respond to you uh, probably tomorrow. Um, so final question that I can see at the moment is, uh, I use cobalt and selenium bullets because I am in a coastal, in coastal South Australia. Is application of these bullets, uh, bracket three year sustained release, close bracket, compatible with multimin? Yeah, so we, we don't recommend using multimin at the same time of injectable, or the injectable trace minerals containing selenium or copper or boluses that goes into the woman. So in this in this case, um, yeah, you should avoid using multimin because we can have an overload of selenium. And maybe start with the with a new group of animals, starting with the winners and the new group of use um, without the, the bullets and using mm -hmm. using oral or the oral supplements plus multimin. If you rec if you recognize that you are really in a selenium deficient area. Thank you, Pella. Um, Pella, everyone likes hearing you speak. Apparently, so we've got uh, more questions coming through. Um, when multibin responses are relatively low, how do we know the multibin response is due to multibin, not more careful management, uh, as tends to occur in trials? Hmm. Sorry, can you repeat again? <laughs> Sure. When multimin responses are relatively low, how do we know the multimin response is due to multimin and not more careful management as tends to occur in trials? Oh, sure like, yeah, when we, when we conduct trials. So this is why we have a yeah. control group that did mm -hmm. not receive the treatment. So we have a control group that is has the basic lifetime <laughs> management, for example. And we have another group that received the lifetime yield management plus multimin. So we are able to differentiate the two groups that yep. the one that has the multimin treatment was having better or similar responses to the other. Great. No, thank you, Paula. And um, yeah, thank you, Graham and George. We'll leave it there, guys. If you do have more questions, we will get back to you or get a, an ASM or a local Verbeck area sales manager to get in contact with you. Um, Guys, a survey will pop up following this webinar. Um, don't forget to complete this if you do want to go into the draw to win a pack of Multimin for sheep. Um, mm -hmm. And just uh, before we do end, just revisiting some of the key points from this webinar, uh, Oversim has been shown to increase lambing rates by 23%, uh, and Multimin has been shown to increase lambs marked by 9% and weaning rates by 2.3 kilos. Um, but the target repro program includes a lot more than just the application of Oversim and Multimin. <laughs> It is important to ensure you have the capabilities to manage more lambs on your property. Uh, the key considerations here include managing the mob size of your flock and the nutritional considerations of managing multiple bearing ewes as well. So please keep that in mind. And uh, finally, oops, um, we do have a special offer for those who do intend to follow the Target Repro program. Uh, if you do buy 500 mils of OSIM and 500 mils of Multimin for sheep, you'll receive an applicator pack uh, worth $200. Uh, all you have to do is follow the link on your screen, follow the prompts and upload your invoice before the end of July to receive that pack. Um, so yeah, please keep an eye out for a follow-up email uh, in the next 24 hours. This will have all the important information from this webinar, including details and the promotions, uh, where to find more information about Target Repro, 
uh, and much more as well. Um, it'll also include a recording of this webinar too, if you do want to watch it again or share it with your friends. Um, so with that being said, we'll end it there. And uh, yeah, thank you all for your time um, tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. It's been a record a record webinar for us. So I really appreciate everyone, everyone jumping on board and, and supporting us here. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a, a fantastic night and a fantastic uh, rest of the week. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye.